Hello, my name is Axel Scherer. I will give you a quick introduction in the objection mechanism of UVM. A UVM environment is fundamentally dynamic and random. And that's very good, right? That is one of the key benefits of UVM. But it also brings some challenges. For example, it's very hard to predict when every member that participates in a test is done. Right? There are a lot of components, a lot of activity, all runs in parallel. When are they all done processing? When is it safe to end the test? You certainly don't want to prematurely end your test and screw up the results. Right? You might get failing tests that are actually just due to the fact that you end something too early. So objections is basically a mechanism that allows every participating member to pull a veto right and control the end of the test uh, this way. Independently, all the components can uh, say, we are done. OK? So in an abstract view, you start your test. The first thing that, that happens will immediately raise an objection. right? So whatever it is, it will raise an objection. And as more activity starts, more objections will be raised. Then the system pulls continuously for how many objections are outstanding. And only if no more objections uh, are outstanding and everything is dropped, it will actually go to the end. So you can see this is a very dynamic process and it can adapt to your system. If you have more members, it, it will be automatically scale up uh, to any environment you have. Let's look at this from a UVM environment perspective. Here another look in the simple environment. You have a lot going on. Virtual sequencer with its associated sequences. An interface UVC with driver, sequencer, monitor, collector. You have a module UVC which has a scoreboard and all that stuff. All these participants processing a lot of data, transactions are flowing around, calculations are happening, checking, all that good stuff. Right? And they are basically working all independently. Right? So we don't want to wind down this test prematurely and screw up the results. Another way of looking at it is this flag model. Right? Once the test kicks off, the first member immediately raises a flag. That's basically an objection. And then more activity starts to happen. Right? The test gets really cranking. A lot of things are going on. A lot of interfaces kick in. You know, maybe we configure the device and now we're really pushing traffic in and the scoreboard kicks in and all that good stuff. So we are reaching the peak of activity and then we're winding things down in a controlled manner. And we're waiting basically for the last member to drop his objection and only then we will wind down the test. Bang! This is the end of the objection. You can find more videos like this either on this YouTube channel or at support.cadence.com at the video library for the Incisive Simulator. Thank you very much. Have a great day and talk to you soon.